Today we are with ESPN esports host and commentator Arda Ocal. Our viewers in Canada might remember him from his his time with the Score and Nether Network, Weather Network, not Nether Weather. I don't, I don't know. Okay, Tom. Oh, what is esports for viewers who do not know? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thrilled to be here. Heard a lot about you too. Glad to be here. I heard, I, I, I think this is going to be my toughest interview of my entire career, but I'm ready for it. I heard you guys have been preparing all weekend. So I'm very excited to hear the questions that you have come up with. Um, esports yeah. is uh, competitive video games. So back in my day, I'm an old man at this point. Uh, we treated video games more like a hobby. It was something that you played on the side, but there wasn't necessarily a career path unless you were going to create the video games or you were going to market the video games or work in an office. Definitely not competing in the video games, but now that's all changed. There is a whole ecosystem, a bunch of leagues dedicated to professional video game players with serious prize money involved and lucrative careers. You're a pretty good interviewer yourself. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Why did your career lead you into esports? Uh, I was a lifelong fan of video games. I love them. I enjoy them. Uh, it is my number one pastime. Uh, it's a lifelong obsession. And to be honest with you, when I got into broadcasting when I got into media it wasn't an option it was it definitely wasn't a full-time option but I, I I also loved sports I grew up in Canada I grew up in Toronto and obviously as a Canadian most Canadians love hockey I loved hockey and I got into sports and did a lot of work in the minor hockey leagues like the OHL uh, I was the host of the Brampton Battalion OHL team, and then I moved on to the AHL where I did the Toronto Marlies, and then uh, my career took me across Canada. I was a weather person in Ottawa and then in Vancouver, and then I moved to the United States, and I got a job with WWE, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, but, but through all of that, guys, I played video games, and I love them, especially if they were portable games. In Vancouver... I lived there for a year, and honestly, I didn't even own a TV. I just owned a Nintendo 3DS, and I played, I don't know, I must have cycled through 15 or 16 games. That was my number one source of entertainment. And there was actually an arcade that I would go to in Vancouver that had an NHL video game that was, like, super rare, and I would just play that all the time. I must have spent, I don't know, 25 bucks a week just playing that game. It was the best. Which one? It was called NHL 2-on-2 Two -two Open Ice Challenge. Basically, there was a game in the 90s called NBA Jam, which uh, maybe your parents would remember. Like, it was awesome. It was such a great game. It was like an arcade, like, he's on fire, like, dunks and everything. It was the best. It was so much fun. They made a hockey version of that called 2-on-2 Two -two Open Ice Challenge, and it was so fun. But it's like one of those, like, underground hits that not a lot of people talk about. But it was awesome. And it's like a rare, like, not, you won't find that machine anywhere. So the fact that it was there, like, 10 minutes from where I was living, I was there almost every day. It was awesome. Our dad spent a lot of on, on NBA Jam. Yes. Let's go. I love it. I love to hear it. Was it made by Midway, too? It was. It was made by Midway. Good catch. Midway made a lot of great games in the 90s. Uh, NBA Jam, Mortal Kombat, WrestleMania, the arcade game, the NHL game, NFL Blitz. They made a bunch of games in the 90s. They were one of the preeminent video game creators. And actually, a friend of mine who worked there is creating a documentary about it all, uh, which has a lot of like the behind-the-scenes footage of how everything was made. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's called Insert Coin. What are the challenges in covering esports for ESPN? 
I mean, it's it's just like covering anything else, any 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 sport really. It's all about uh, you know, making sure that you're telling the right stories and giving the right coverage and attention to different titles. I mean, on on any given week, I'm hosting multiple programs. I just did a coach's corner show that I host every Monday where I talk to a different coach in the Call of Duty League. And tomorrow, Tuesday, is our League of Legends program. That's every week. Wednesday, I do a, a Call of Duty League show uh, that airs every week. Thursday is a Valorant show. Valorant is a new game that's created by Riot Games, the same people that made League of Legends. Uh, and then there's weekend coverage, a bunch of events that, uh, um, uh, whether it's Rocket League, Overwatch, uh, you name it, we're covering it. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big thrill for me. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot of work to keep up with so many different titles, but I welcome the challenge and I like it a lot. Does your coach's corner have any rants that have nothing to do with esports? Uh, sometimes they'll talk about how the challenges of coaching. Like I, I foc on that show, I focus more on how those coaches approach and what their philosophies are in coaching those teams, right? So it's more like, what are they doing to make bring their teams success and, and put them in the best positions to succeed? So sometimes they'll uh, you know talk about challenges, communication, what to say when to say it, that kind of thing. So uh, maybe sometimes we'll talk about things that have nothing to do with esports, but usually we, we stick to the Call of Duty League. You had a recurring thread about your Call of Duty skills. Yes, I did. Uh, they are not too good, I will admit. Right now. I'd say they're better now. I mean, I played about 100 games of Warzone, and I was awful when I started, and I'm still pretty bad now, but... I would say that I'd say there's moderate improvement. Like I feel like if I was maybe a little younger, my, my uh, reaction times would be a lot faster, but you know, I decent improvement. Let's go with that. Decent. What console do you play on? Uh, I have all of them. Actually. I I'm, I'm just a big console guy. I have an Xbox and a PS4. Uh, all the all the classic ones. I would say my sleeper pick, though, the Nintendo Switch. I love it. You can bring it around with you. Has some awesome games. In my humble opinion, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, one of the best games ever made. And actually, let me show you. This is a um, that's a Breath of the Wild print right there in my setup. It's my gaming setup. I noticed, by the way, you have some Funko Pops in your background. Here are mine. I want to show you mine. So these are my Funko Pops. I have Tracer from Overwatch. I have Muhammad Ali, I have Mean Gene Okerlund, I have NJ Devil, who's actually a friend of mine, the mascot of the New Jersey Devils, then the GOAT, wait, let me see if I can, sorry, there we go, there, the GOAT, Alex Trebek, right there, the GOAT, uh, James Hetfield from Metallica, my favorite band, Khabib Nurmagomedov, one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time, and then this random one bobblehead right here. This is uh, Ken Danico, one of the legendary New Jersey Devils defensemen dressed up as a Ghostbuster. There, see his, there's his head bobbing. There it is. So that's my setup. And then I have this, which is a, uh, uh, right there, a, um, uh, a, a droid from Star Wars and a bunch of other random stuff. Here's Bailey. I, I did an NHL 94 video game tournament once and they created me a very custom, you can see my names on it, a custom NHL 94 lion bobblehead. Yeah, we actually have uh, Bret Hart. Yes. The excellence of execution. Who's who's in your background? So you got Bret Hart. So we have Bret Hart, William Carlson, the doctor. I think it's which doctor? 13th. 13th doctor. Sidney Crosby, then Gordon Hayward. We have a lot. Like, we have a, um, a whole entire bookshelf of Pop Funkos. So what? Who do you have there? So you have Bret Hart. Who else? Do you, I can't really see. Who else do you got? So we got Bret Hart, William Carlson of the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, and then nice. we have the Thirteenth Doctor from Doctor Who, and then Cindy Crosby, and then Gordon Hayward from the Boston Celtics. Nice. Are you are you two hockey fans? Uh, I'm a hockey fan. He's not. I'm a I don't fan like of it. the Vegas Golden Knights. I think it's pretty immature. Hockey what? is immature. Oh I man, why? Stupid. 
Oh no, hockey's not stupid, it's fun. Oh no, oh no. Basketball's fun. Okay, who's your favorite basketball team? Celtics, obviously. Why not the Toronto Raptors? I don't like them. I don't really oh. watch any basketball, so. Who's your, who's your favorite hockey team? You said the Golden Knights? Vegas Golden Knights, yes. Wow. How many Vegas Golden Knights fans live in Saskatchewan? Lots. Lots. Lots actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Why is that? I don't know. I think, like, um, maybe it's because nobody knew where to... Lots of Golden Knights ties to Saskatchewan. Kenny, wow. Kenny Ma Kelly McCrimmon is from Saskatchewan. There you go. Hey, random fact for you. You know, you have Bret Hart in your background. Here's a little yeah. trivia for you. What is Bret Hart's uh, connection to Saskatchewan, a major event in his career? His first wife. No, Tom knows this one. Come on, let me... Wait, title belt. First title belt. That is correct. He typed in first wife and I'm like, what? And I just said it. Do you know the city? Do you, do you know which city he won it in? Saskatoon. That is correct. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, 1992. Who did he beat? Uh, Ric Flair. That's correct. Wow. You guys are smart. I love it. I'm so Bret Hart smart. would be very proud to hear this. I will say this. You, you would be very proud to know that you two knew the answer to that question. That's a, that is a very big trivia question. Yeah, that you did, yes. Good we, for you. Stumped, we stumped Cody Rhodes with that fact two years ago. Wow. He didn't know? I think so. No, no he didn't. I, this kind of Dang. Canada has several esports teams. Why do you think none of the sports networks have here have started covering esports? Oh, a lot have. There's, there's uh, TSN does a lot of coverage. Uh, Marissa Roberto is a very prominent uh, gaming journalist who works at TSN. And uh, she does a terrific job. And, and actually, Canada is becoming a hotbed for esports, whether it's teams, whether it's um, streamers. I mean, Shroud is Canadian. He's from Mississauga. There's a lot of prominent video game enthusiasts, streamers, content creators that come from Canada. And it's no surprise. Canada is a wonderful country with a lot of creative people. And we just have this knack uh, to know how to succeed and navigate through uh, navigate through the waters to, to find our homes and find our niche. So uh, I'm not surprised at all. And I think it's only going to go up from here. I think we're going to see a lot more uh, as the weeks and months go by. I just want to make say this. Biz Nasty, I just saw you joined, and I was wondering if we could do, set up an interview with you for our live. Totally off, um, off uh, railing, but that's actually kind of rare that we get one of the people who we actually want to interview Join. I hope he does. I hope he does for your sake. That would be a lot of fun. Please. You guys ask really, I got to say, you guys ask really good questions. This is, this has been a lot of fun. I will say that for sure. Park Andre Furry asks, Mr. Ocal, while honeymooning in the Lake Como, did you happen to meet George Clooney? I did not, no. And I did not go by. Apparently he has a home there uh, in Lake Como. But where I did go was where they filmed Star Wars, which was awesome. That was a ton of fun. And we spent half of our honeymoon there a couple years ago, and it was a blast. Beautiful scenery, right on the lake, luscious trees. The beach was awesome. The, the shops walking around, tons of fun. But we also went to where Anakin Skywalker and Padme get married in Star Wars Episode Two. It was awesome. And also uh, at the same compound, the same grounds, they filmed, it was Casino Royale. So they filmed the James Bond film there as well. So that was cool to see. It was like a two for one. You go to the same place and you get a James Bond scene and you get a Star Wars scene at the same time, which is awesome. How was your wife's first Mother Day? Mother's, Mother's Day. Mother Day. Mother's Day. Oh, that's a very nice, that's a very thoughtful question. Uh, I think she had a lot of fun. Um, she, we made her lunch. Uh, my kid is three months old. Uh, we gave her three cards. One of them was from me. One of them was from my daughter and I. And in one of them, I had my daughter write 
Uh, here's a funny story for you. So I gave my, she's three months old, so she doesn't know what's going on. Gave her the pen, tried to have her draw. And uh, somehow, some way, some pen marks got onto her face. I don't know how it happened, but by the end of it, she drew on her own face. So it took me a while wow. to take the pen marks off of my daughter's face. Yeah. So that's probably bad parenting on my part. Like maybe I'm not getting many marks for that, but I mean, hey, what can you Arda, do? Sal Greco 23 asks, Arda, did you watch Money in the Bank PPV last night? I don't know. Pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. Pay at... Yeah. Uh, I I didn't watch I didn't watch the whole pay per view I just watched the Money in the Bank ladder match itself and the reason is I think see I'm a lapsed fan so I don't watch every week in the last like after I left WWE in 2016 so four years ago I've probably watched maybe five or six matches and mostly because my friends work there and I want to see them succeed uh, it's not like I'm not bitter or anything I just have different things I got to do I hockey and esports there's a lot to watch right but what i am yeah but what i am interested in a lot is the uh the cinematic matches like at wrestlemania the boneyard match or the fire uh fi what is that the fire uh funhouse match firefly funhouse match with bray yeah. wyatt and john cena that interests me so why watch the money in the bank ladder match with that in mind and that was a lot of fun. So, like, I think that if, if those kind of matches are coming up in the future, I might be interested in checking them out. I was a lot more interested in the Undertaker documentary after the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which I thought was very well done. And for that documentary to succeed, it had to be behind the scenes as much as they showed, which I'm glad that's the route that WWE took for sure. Were there any surprises in the doc that documentary? Doc documentary for me well i think it was a surprise for everyone because we've never seen the undertaker out of character publicly right like it's very rare that we would get a glimpse like that so just to see him vulnerable just to see him talk about his insecurities that's a shock to everyone a everyone mm. that doesn't know him right like we've never seen that before so from that angle that's really cool like i really feel like um that is a that's a, that is a win. I think that wrestling fans will definitely enjoy that and seeing that. And it really humanizes The Undertaker as well, because for the longest time, we didn't know who Mark Calloway was. We just knew The Undertaker character and, and The Undertaker character was protected at all costs. Never did interviews, barely did appearances. You rarely saw Undertaker out of the ring. And now we're getting to see The Undertaker like we've never seen him before and it's very humanizing. And I think that the fact that this was filmed over multiple years and it's a multi-part series, I think that's very interesting. I'm curious to see what else we will find out. I mean, like, we rarely see the curtain being peeled this much. Like, we saw The Undertaker and Roman Reigns talking at dinner the day before their match at WrestleMania. Like, even a few years ago, that would be impossible for us to see something like that in a WWE offering. So... The fact that we got to see that is really cool for a wrestling fan, for sure, especially if you're a long-time wrestling fan. Uh, so, actually, have you met, I don't know if I'm saying this, Matthew Fyrant? Fyrante. from Regina. We do not know which team he's on. No, I have not. He, he's an eSports athlete. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm not surprised. There's a lot of really, like, good people from Saskatchewan. I've been to Saskatchewan. It's great. I enjoyed it a lot. We did a wrestling tour in Saskatchewan in, I want to say, 2008. We went to Yorkton, we went to Estevan, and we went to Swift Current. Hmm. Uh, so you you talk a lot about Fortnite. Have you, do you play the game yourself? No, oh, I'm awful at it. I, 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 I stink. We actually might get it. Uh, you should. You should try. Yo, it's fun. It's a fun game. You oh, sorry. We really want to play it. Is it long overdue for The Undertaker? What is? Uh, like, an open appearance like that. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, like, he's at the end of his career, right? Like, this documentary is going to lead to 
probably his last match, right? So it makes a lot of sense. Why not? Get, show us something we haven't seen before. And I, no doubt it's generating interest for the WWE Network. So it's a great business decision. So sure, of course. In your, Mark Andre Furry asks, in your opinion, in your opinion, does hashtag the last stance solidify Michael Jordan as the greatest basketball player of all time? Oh, man, I'm not equipped to answer that question. A lot of people, the whole Jordan versus LeBron debate. I will leave that debate for the NBA experts. What I will say is this, The Last Dance is probably the greatest documentary I've ever seen personally. And I haven't been more excited for a documentary because we've been waiting on this footage for decades. It's been in a vault in New Jersey, just sitting there. And people have been clamoring and waiting to see this behind the scenes footage from the greatest athlete to ever live, essentially, right? So now that we're getting a chance to see it and present it in the way that it is, it is outstanding. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm the guy to answer that question, which uh, athlete is better, LeBron James or Michael Jordan. They both have compelling cases to make. But I will say that I have in watching this documentary, I have never felt the will to win from an athlete more than I feel from Michael Jordan watching this documentary. It is apparent that Michael Jordan could absolutely go down as the athlete that wanted to win the most at all costs over any other athlete, for sure. You cover esports. What's your favorite video game to play? Oh, I have so many. This is a good. T this is a good question. Uh, the Mario series is awesome. Uh, I keep up with it. Mario Maker is a lot of fun. Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite video game of all time. I play a lot of Hearthstone yeah. Battlegrounds. Nintendo. I'm huge into Tetris. I love the NHL series. I'm playing a lot of Valorant. I play a lot of video games. Yes. I, I actually you're really, well you're really well rounded. I actually really complete I about two years ago I think I completed Breath of the Wild. It wasn't it was that so bad. Good. It's so good. Yeah, it yeah it is. No. I remember Isn't it great? Isn't it such so much fun so much fun? Yeah. I remember my friend at their birthday party. Um, they actually uh, they kept on um, giving the controller around just so they could beat Ganon over and over and over, and over, and over, and over again. again. <laughs> it was just so, it was so funny, funny because because he had all the best he had the best armor and it's just like whoa. No, it's so good. It's beautiful. The soundtrack is amazing. It's such an expansive game. The map is large. There's so much to do and discover in the game. Like, I've put in, like, I don't know, 300 hours in the game, and I'm still discovering things I didn't know before. It is a masterpiece, in my opinion, for sure. Here's the funny thing, actually. So, the people who, Nintendo, they've never done a sequel to a Zelda game before. And, like, like, That's right. And they're doing one to Breath of the Wild. I have to say, you two are very well researched. Like, if I was as well, if I was as well researched as the both of you when I was 11 years old, I think I would be way further along in my career. I'm very impressed. You guys know your stuff. He's a big Zelda guy for sure. Uh, I don't know if secret, yeah. I don't think it's a secret society. I think it's just a legion of fans. I think just people love Zelda. And maybe there's like a society of popular people who love Zelda. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised. There's, there's a ton of people. Kenny Omega loves Zelda, Cody loves yeah. Zelda. Yeah, there's so many, there's a lot of wrestlers, but also a lot of celebrities that just love Zelda. It's such a great game, it's beautiful. Yeah, I love Zelda, like, uh, it's probably, it's probably like, um, a 75% chance that, like, say, a 25% chance that somebody doesn't like Zelda. I just want to yeah. say this, I just want to mention this, when you are on, like, almost the final stage of beating Ganon on Breath of the Wild, he looks like a pig. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> this is true. This, this is true. The final form of Ganon does look like a pig with a snout and everything. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's just... Who knows? Why does he look like a pig? Maybe he figures this out in the next... In the next... In the sequel, yeah. 
What is the difference between being an esports athlete and a physical athlete? Yeah, that's a good question to end on for sure. Uh, I would say that an esports athlete, like I, I think that it's a misconception that esports are easy, right? A lot of people watch esports and they're like, I can do this. I play video games. I'm really good. But you don't understand how difficult it is. The nuances when you get to that top level, that elite level of competition, it's very tough. And yeah, maybe it looks easy because they're making it look easy and they're sitting in a chair, but that doesn't mean that they're not competing at the highest levels. That is a big misnomer. So I would say that obviously with an athlete, there's a lot more physicality involved. They're, you know, they're, they're, that, the, the, the mediums are a lot different but that does not take away from the difficulty and the impressive nature of getting to that level of competition in esports and making it there and making a career out of it. it doesn't take away from that accomplishment at all. But yeah, like the physical nature of sports is the biggest difference naturally. But otherwise, the mentality is the same, the winning attitude, playing as a team if you're in a team game the uh, reps of, of, you know, just like the nuances of being a professional, how to conduct yourself, etc. Maybe there's more money involved in sports. Maybe there's more attention in sports, but that doesn't mean that uh, esports athletes uh, are to be scoffed at for sure. There's definitely a value there. So yeah, good question. Was there something in the water at the score? Because some of the alumni from there have gone to on to do some pretty yeah. Pretty great there's things. been so many great uh, talents at the score. It's amazing, actually, how many, especially from my era. So many different names have gone on to great things, and that's just a testament to how how uh, creative a lot of those people were. I give credit to to to, to my teammates because there were a lot of creative people there. Did you comb your hair for this? I, don't know. I, did, I, did, I did. I did specifically for this interview. Because interview. Does it look okay? okay. Yeah, I, 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 I tried. Just, I wanted to look presentable because I knew how important this interview was. So I appreciate you guys having me. This was a lot of fun. And yet every time, although everybody else combs their hair, I don't. You can get away with it, though. The, the messy look suits you, so you can get away with it. Um, I read your Fortnite ar article. Is there any... Other um, non-listed updates that you see coming? Not really, to be. I mean, I think that uh, the those were just 10 ideas, so I just kept it to 10. I, the sky's the limit for Fortnite. There's so many collaborations available. There's so many great things that they can do. I think that uh, that's going to be the next social media, the next integration yeah. late night talk like Fortnite is going to be massive it's going to be a metaverse it's 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 definitely on that track i could see like an iphone announcement happening in Fortnite. i could see brands partnering with Fortnite. there's so much happening there and uh, brands yeah. are already partnering with Fortnite. yeah exactly so yeah thank the sky's the limit there thank you for joining us today we've had a wonderful time actually thank you for letting oh wait us one last question it's your host wait tom Bye. Wait, wait, wait no one last question okay one last question go ahead are you tired of washing your hands? <laughs> no, I'm not tired of washing my hands at all. In fact, I will wash my hands more. I will wash my hands double time. Happy birthday twice, because we got to stay safe. And we got to do our part. So we have been taking social distancing very, very seriously, actually. And we definitely wash our hands excessively, but for good reason. So no, I'm not tired of washing my hands. If you need correspondence from Regina, we are here. Okay, We're Regina there. correspondence. I'm, I'm telling you, I will end on this and then I'm going to go. But uh, this was a great interview. You guys are well researched. You did your homework and you came prepared. And that are th that, that, those are three things that are crucial to any interview. So be proud. You guys did a really, really good job. And I wish you continued success in your show. Thank you. So thumbs up for the Massey Twins. Two thumbs up. Let's go. I'm going to screen record that and post it, like, get, show it to every single people. That we Thank you. Intend on interviewing. My yes. back hurts. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs>